Good morning. It's my privilege to officially welcome all of you to Liberty University's 43rd annual commencement exercises. Today, we confer a record 19,430 degrees. To begin, I would like to recognize our guests of honor, the class of 2016. Would all of our graduates please stand? We, we are so proud of you and thank God for each one of you. Do not take this achievement lightly. You have earned this honor. Your years of hard work, sacrifice, and dedication have made this day a reality. On behalf of the university, I commend you for staying the course and seeing this goal to fruition. It has been a genuine, genuine privilege, privilege for me and all the faculty and staff to serve you and to be a part of your lives. Congratulations, graduates. You may be seated. I would also like to formally recognize and thank the family members and friends who have supported you throughout your college career. They stood be They stood behind you, prayed for you, and encouraged you when you needed it the most. They celebrated every step of your journey, applauded you as you, as you passed milestones, jerked your chain when you were out of line, probably wrote a lot of checks to help you out, and are here today to cheer you on as you cross the finish line. Let this be a reminder that no one succeeds in life alone. Would all the parents of our graduates please stand? Many of you, like me, are motivated, inspired, and lovingly supported by our spouses. Since they are our unsung heroes, it is important that we take a moment to recognize them. Would the spouses of all the graduates please stand? The class of 2016 is filled with people who will have a tremendous impact on the world. Last year, Dr. O.S. Hawkins was our keynote speaker at baccalaureate. He presented a stirring message that challenged our graduates to be VIPs by equipping themselves with vision, integrity, and purpose. He later authored a book based on his message to Liberty's graduates, and today as you walk across the stage to accept your diploma, you will receive your complimentary copy, a limited, actually a limited edition copy of, the, of Dr. Hawkins' book. So thank you, O.S. Hawkins, for this incredible gift to the class of 2016. <laughs> of the 19,430 graduates in the class of 2016, there are 8,464 earning bachelor's degrees, 8,364 earning master's degrees, 549 earning doctoral degrees, including 56 graduates from our School of Law, 5,167 5 members of the class of 2016 are graduating with honors, and, and 1,143 are graduating with a perfect 4.0 GPA. We also have 109 graduates of Liberty Online Academy participating today. Liberty, Liberty Online Academy now has 16,000 students enrolled in K through 12 programs, including my daughter Caroline, who's completing her 10th grade year now in the Online Academy. More and more parents are choosing Liberty Online Academy because of the common core curriculum that is spreading across the country along with transgender restrooms, and because many parents simply do not have time to homeschool or cannot afford traditional private schools. Liberty Online Academy is poised to revolutionize traditional elementary and secondary education the same way that Liberty University Online has revolutionized higher education. 
So congratulations to our online academy graduates. The Liberty, Univer Liberty University class of 2016 includes 32 siblings, 25 parents graduating with their children, 11, 11 sets of twins, and 107 married couples celebrating their graduation together. So. <laughs> Attending Liberty University is a tradition in our family. I graduated from Liberty before going on to law school at the University of Virginia. My wife, Becky, my sons, Trey and Wesley, all attended Liberty. My 16-year-old daughter, Caroline, can't wait to attend Liberty. My brother and sister are alumni. Even my mom graduated from Liberty late in life, as many of you are doing today. This year, Becky and I had two nephews and two nieces at Liberty. Last year, my younger son, Wesley, surprised the crowd at commencement by proposing to graduating senior Laura Brumble. Fortunately, she said yes, since so many people were watching, but they were married in October. Trey and Sarah were married the year before that, so all our free time during the last two years has been spent planning for what turned out to be two beautiful weddings. And this spring, all our free time was spent planning for Caroline's Sweet 16 birthday party at our farm two weeks ago. So Becky, would you and the rest of the family please stand? Is that your plus one sitting beside you, Caroline? Uh, all right. <laughs> I need to know about these things ahead of time. But, uh, I, I want to welcome Glenn and Rachel Espenshade. They're sitting in the tower to my right. They've been married 53 years. They have four children. 15 grandchildren, two great-grandchildren. Their grandson, Josiah, is graduating today. Their grandson, Jeremiah, graduated in 2012. Grandson, Micah, will be a freshman in the fall. And a fourth grandson, Zachariah, has committed to attending Liberty. Glenn is a successful businessman, worked in the agribusiness, invested in real estate, and all that enabled him, enabled he and Rachel to support Christian education by becoming one of Liberty's top 10 donors. The Espen Shades were also among Liberty's earliest donors in the 1970s, and we appreciate their loyalty and friendship over the decades. Congratulations to Josiah, and thank you to Glenn and Rachel for all you have meant to Liberty University. Thank you. Linda Trevant and three of her grandchildren are graduating together today. Grandson Michael Trevant is 16, Amia Young Trevant is 15, and Malachi Trevant is the youngest graduate in the class of 2016 at age 14. I, I, usually, I usually recognize our oldest graduate who's in their 90s, but I have strict instructions from that person not to name them or to reveal their age, so I'll honor that. I think they're afraid it might hurt their job search if, if, if people know, if somebody knows their actual age, so, but there is somebody in their 90s. Jose Colon is a single father on active duty in the military, and he is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies. Jose made a promise to his four-year-old son, Jorian, that he would never do his homework while his son was awake. At times, Jorian even said, Daddy, if you need to do your homework, I understand. You don't have to play with me. But Jose stayed true to his promise, and his son was just as excited as Jose when he turned in his last assignment. Jorian gave his dad a high five and said, Daddy, you did that like a boss. So congratulations, Jose. This morning's ceremony was opened in prayer by Anthony Beckles. He's a member of our Board of Trustees. His son, Andre, is graduating today. So congratu congratulations to Andre and the whole Beckles clan seated right down here. If you guys want to stand up and wave at us, it's a bunch of them. There they are. But, but, uh, 
Another member of our Board of Trustees, Don Crane, will close the ceremony in prayer. He has a daughter and a grandson who are graduating today. We're so proud of both of them. And Dr. Harold Wilmington will lead a special prayer of dedication for our graduates. Harold is a legend around here because of his biblical scholarship. He has attended all 43 of our commencement ceremonies, except last year when a brief illness prevented him from closing the ceremony in prayer. And as you have probably seen by now on the stage, Willie Robertson is here. Last time, last time Willie was on campus, Last time Willie was on campus, he was filming the season finale for the season, this season of Duck Dynasty. You should have seen him riding down the tubing runs at Snowflex like a pro. But uh, Willie, do you have any words of wisdom for our graduates? Yeah. Good. What's going on? I feel so smart in this robe. When I showed up, I didn't feel real smart, but now when I put this on, I feel super smart to be here with all you really smart people, especially people on this stage. Thank you uh, for the invite. I haven't been to a gradua college graduation since my college graduation, and that actually says more about my family than me, so. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm the only one who graduated from college. Um, that's why I'm the boss of Duck Dynasty. Uh, but I have this great picture. Um, I'm actually really clean cut, a little slimmer than I am now, and uh, I'm holding this little one-year-old boy, my son, who is John Luke, who has now just finished his freshman year at Liberty University. So uh, as I look at you guys, I'm proud of you. Um, as, a, as a Liberty dad now, I look forward to my son being out there and uh, graduating. And I guess the only advice uh, really I have for you is just to be, be infectious around people with a positive attitude of Christ. Uh, the Bible says, be the aroma of Christ. And so uh, no matter what happens, uh, affect other people and be the person that people want to be around because when you reflect him and you're a positive person and you help others, people want to be around you. People want to hire you. Uh, some people actually even want to look like you. So if you've got a big monster manly beard, some, some people grow out a little teeny tiny petite well manicured beard like Jerry's. It's like I want to do it but I can't quite commit. <laughs> <laughs> this is the master's degree of beards and hair. Believe me, it's a commitment. You just don't throw this on and off. I tell you, you may not, you may not know what you want to do in life. I didn't. When I was graduated college, uh, I thought I was going to be a professional bowler. That did not work out. Uh, you never know. It may end up being selling duck calls is what uh, makes you successful. And uh, let the Lord work. Uh, no experience is bad. No job is bad. Just learn from it. Reflect Him. Love you guys. I'm proud of you. Thank you, Jerry, for inviting me. Thank you, Willie. We also have uh, former Congresswoman Michelle Bachman here with her husband. and. Their daughter Elise is graduating today, and, and I just learned last night that our, our football coach for many years, Sam Rotigliano, who was the coach at, for the Cleveland Browns, his granddaughter Shane is graduating from Liberty. So we, we, uh, we just want to recognize everybody that, that's come to my attention, and, and many more if I, if, um, if, if I can remember who they all are. But we are, we are awarding five posthumous degrees represented by the empty chairs in front of me draped in graduation regalia. As I recognize each graduate, I ask that their families please stand. Diane Kropp was a student here at Liberty who passed away in February this year. Both her father and her boyfriend are attending this ceremony. Diana was born in the Philippines and moved to the States 12 years ago. Lindsay Margaret Lett passed away in December of 2015 at the young age of 33. Lindsay's father and mother are joining us today. She was earning her master's in public health after receiving a bachelor's in business in 2013. 
Hillary De Tomaso is receiving a Master of Arts in Professional Counseling. We are joined by her husband, mother, and one of her three daughters. Danny Thomas had sub substantially completed his Master's of Business Administration. He was the first in his family to obtain a master's degree. He was the father of four sons and one daughter. Family members, few here can imagine the pain that you feel, but take comfort in knowing that your Liberty family is praying for you. We thank God for the legacy of your loved ones and for the lives they touched. Thank you. I'm very proud to say that the class of 2016 includes 5,803 who have served, are serving, or who are married to a service member in our nation's military. Liberty is proud to be one of the most military-friendly universities in our nation with over 30,000 military students stationed all over the world. 1,390 of our graduates are now on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces. Would all of our active duty mili military graduates please stand now? On behalf of Liberty University, I would like to thank you for all you have sacrificed for your country and for all you do to protect our nation. We would not enjoy the freedoms that we do today without the dedication of men and women like you. I am privileged now to recognize a special veteran and two war heroes to Liberty University today. First, my father's twin brother, Gene Falwell, served in the Navy in the 1950s. Gene and his wife, Joanne, still live in the old home place. There's a picture of it up, how it looked in the 1920s. It still looks about the same now. But uh, that, that property is only about two miles from here, and it abuts the Liberty University campus behind Liberty Mountain. Gene avoids crowds whenever possible. He has one necktie that he wears to weddings and funerals. That's it. <laughs> but whenever possible, I try to get him over to Liberty's campus, and it seems I can only get that done when Willie Robertson is visiting. <laughs> I had him talked into coming over today, Willie, but he was on his tractor Thursday, bush hogging a field, and a tree limb gave him a black eye. So that's at age 83. But, he, uh, but my family always enjoys visiting with Gene and Joanne and hearing stories about my grandfather, who was an entrepreneur and businessman who operated a hotel and other businesses on top of Liberty Mountain in the 1920s and 30s, and maybe next time we'll be able to get him over to, to greet the crowd. F next, Tim Lee was our keynote speaker at the baccalaureate service last night. Tim has served on the Board of Trustees of Liberty University since 1991 and regularly speaks in convocation. He lost both legs in combat in Vietnam in 1971 and spent over a year in military hospitals. He dropped from 187 pounds to 80 pounds. The doctors and the nurses did not expect him to live, but God's plan for him was to carry the message of Jesus Christ around the world. Since he was called to preach in 1973, he's traveled millions of miles and shared the gospel with countless numbers of people around the world. We were honored to confer a doctoral, de doctoral degree on Tim last night. Tim actually led the group Veterans for Cruz during Ted Cruz's 2016 presidential campaign. We are honored to have Tim here today, and I'm proud to call him my friend. Tim has been a hero, not only to this nation, but to, but to this university as well. Please give Tim a hand.
Mr. George Rogers is here today. He served in the Philippines in World War II. George came to work here in 1974 as our chief financial officer and retired in 1999. He was one of my mentors in the many difficult years that Liberty endured financially in the 80s and 90s. He was known as Mr. No by faculty and staff because he was the frugal financial guy who turned everybody down when they wanted to spend money. But George's prudent financial management was largely responsible for Liberty's survival during tough times. In World War II, George was taken prisoner by the Japanese along with 75,000 American and Filipino troops who were forced to march about 75 miles in five days. It was known as the, the Bataan Death March, and many soldiers did not survive. George then spent three and a half years in a Japanese prisoner of war camp. Starvation caused him to fall off to 85 pounds in spite of his height of six foot three. He was told by doctors after the war that he would never have children, that he would likely never, pa pass age, never live past age 40. He's now 97 years old and remains in good health. He has five children, 14 grandchildren, and 18 great-grandchildren, and recently just returned to Japan to tour his former prison camp. George finally received recognition for his service in 2012 by being awarded the Purple Heart and the Prisoner of War Medal. We are so honored to have George Rogers join us today. Would Mr. Rogers and the Provost please join me at the podium? Oh, we're over here. In recognition of George Rogers' sacrifices for our nation and in, and in acknowledgement of his leadership in the fight to preserve those values upon which this nation was founded, as well as his service to this university, with the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University, the Doctorate of Business is hereby conferred upon George Rogers with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. I'm up to this, uh, Jerry. Um, I do want to say that uh, I'm grateful for you and for this university. And speaking for Dr. Falwell Sr., he would be ecstatic with what he, what I see in front of me. It's a fantastic day and I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, God. We have another special guest who flew in from California yesterday. Mr. Randall Wallace was our 2011 commencement speaker and has become a close friend of our family since that time. Randall grew up in Lynchburg and graduated from E.C. Glass High School here. He was the creative force as writer, director, or producer behind some of the best-selling box office hits of our time, including Braveheart, Pearl Harbor, We Were Soldiers, Heaven Is For Real, and Secretariat. Since we are honoring war heroes today, I thought it was fitting for Randall to tell you about another major motion picture that is nearing completion called Hacksaw Ridge. Randall Wallace is considered one of the world's best directors and screenwriters and specializes in creating a story that highlights loyalty, love, courage, and honor. Randall is one of the writers of Hacksaw Ridge based on the story of World War II American Army medic and Congressional Medal of Honor recipient Desmond T. Doss, who, like George Rogers, Randall Wallace and our keynote speaker today, Rashad Jennings, are all from Lynchburg, Virginia. 
In 1999, our local newspaper, the News in Advance, ranked the awarding of the Congressional Medal of Honor to Desmond Doss as one of the 20 most significant events of the 20th century for this city. The director and producer of Hacksaw Ridge is Mel Gibson. Mel revolutionized the film industry over a decade ago with The Passion of the Christ, a film that forever changed Hollywood. The Passion grossed over $600 million during its theatrical release and was the highest grossing religious film ever. One documentary estimated that within a few weeks of the release of The Passion of the Christ, 70,000 people converted to Christianity. Scores of filmmakers and television moguls followed suit, producing dozens of films and television series based on biblical themes in the last decade. Forbes Philanthropy Magazine named Mel one of the most generous celebrities. It's estimated he has given over $7 million to multiple charities. Our family got to know Mel three years ago when he had us over for dinner at his home in Malibu. Trey and Wesley will never forget sparring with the actual sword from the movie Braveheart that hangs over his fireplace. But Mel told us that night that his goal is to do a sequel to The Passion called The Resurrection of Christ. <laughs> Mel and Randall have worked together over the years on some of my favorite movies, and it is now my privilege and honor to welcome back to Liberty University, Mr. Randall Wallace. Thank you, President Falwell, and I can't tell you what an honor it is to be here with this faculty and these students and you parents and all of you who make Liberty what it is. Jerry's right, I grew up here in Lynchburg. This is my hometown, and I came to believe when I was here, that God had a, a reason for me being alive. I wanted to find that reason. I wanted to follow God, follow Jesus. Uh, and I learned that God's plan is better than my plan. I learned that God is with me even when I feel lost and in my darkest moments. And like Willie said, I'd encourage you to believe that in your life, that even when you are lost, God is not. And that has been a guiding thing for my life in telling stories, to, to find the kind of story that in telling these stories, stories make us who we are. And you can go through your life and tell yourself you're a victim, or you can go through your life and tell yourself you're a child of God. Liberty tells stories. Liberty tells the story of the founding fathers and the the men and the women who created this nation and continue to, the young men and women who keep this nation free. Liberty tells the story of Jesus Christ. It's, it's interesting that Jerry references Mel. Right now, I have some reputation in Hollywood. People know what I did, but when I wrote Braveheart, no one knew what I did. And Mel Gibson had the vision to look at a script from an absolutely unknown writer and say, this thing, Braveheart, might really be something. And Mel has made it his business to tell stories that matter, stories that he believes in. Uh, he also told the story of Jesus Christ. And that created some difficulties. And when he was in the, the darkness of this, I encouraged him to come to Liberty to come here to people who, who don't worship Hollywood, but who worship God. And you know, it just so happens that today Mel Gibson is here. Ladies and gentlemen, Mel Gibson. Wow, I, I had a shower, washed my hair, you know, I didn't even get a robe. 
I'm actually, I'm partial to the green color. But there's only one green guy here. I think he got it first anyway. You know, last in, but worst dressed, I guess. And I got the beard memo, right? That's good. Yeah, Jerry and I were growing tandem whiskers, and uh, we tell each other that, uh, you know, the white in there means wisdom. Uh, I came here to see if some of it would rub off, and I thank Jerry for inviting me. I came here 12 years ago, as he said, uh, when Jerry Sr. was here, and he was very kind to me when I was getting a pretty good hiding for that superhero, the ultimate superhero film I made. And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm very thankful uh, for their friendship and acceptance over the years, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Look at all you folks. What is it, 35,000 people? Wow. <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, yeah, and the, one of the other good reasons I came here was to investigate. When I came here the first time to Lynchburg, I didn't know about Desmond Doss, you know. And uh, I've, I've lived with uh, Desmond's story for about almost two years now. And uh, I've gained a tremendous admiration for this man. He was a, a sing, one of the most heroic uh, figures in American history. And um, he was singular, I think. I mean, Medal of Honor winners are all heroes. I mean, they get that, that medal for a, for a reason, but, uh, and, and it's usually in a moment. They'll do something incredible, extraordinary. But uh, Desmond Doss, uh, he just did it over and over and over again. He kept crawling into enemy fire to rescue his buddies, wounded. And he rescued tremendous amounts of, uh, of people. And they have families alive today because of him. He lived to be a ripe old age himself. He passed away in 2008. And um, so I decided to, to come here and look at his hometown and, and to drive along the Desmond Doss Freeway. How many people know who he was even? Probably a lot, right? No? Tremendous um, what he did. And he was a man of um, tremendous conviction. He stuck by his convictions. He was a man of tremendous faith. And it was these things that uh, enabled him to have, to display this courage over and over again and, and do uh, superhuman things. Superhuman and that he could, uh, he could go out inside himself and depend on something greater than himself to achieve something truly extraordinary and miraculous. So, you know, I'm here to honor him. I'm, I'm here, I'm happy to be here to, to, and I bought my film to show some, some friends. And uh, I'm hoping, and it, as Randy says, you know, stories are important to us all. And uh, when I make stories, I don't make them for an elite. I make them so that other people can witness them and be inspired by them. So um, uh, I think it's a, a little lesson for myself first. And then I like to share that with others. But uh, look, I'm real glad to be here. And I'm not real good at talking at these, uh, at these things. I'm kind of awkward. and wasn't my thing. I used to be terrified to stand up. Public speaking used to make me fall into a fit. But, um, so I brought a friend along. And don't get me, you know, I mean, look, just remember when this next guy comes on, it's not that I'm short, right? It's just that he's incredibly tall. And when you see him, I have, I'm going to divulge his real identity. He is Superman, right? So, hey, Vince, come up here and give me a hand. Say a few words. Vince Vaughn. <laughs> He's the man of steel. <laughs> nice to be with you here today. I am Superman. Mel does not uh, tell stories out of school. Uh, I'm a great talker, but I'm a fantastic singer, and I thought maybe I could do a Whitney Houston song for you guys. And I want to dance with somebody. Um, I'll spare you that, but uh, I feel like uh, we got a great experience. I want to thank uh, Jerry and, and Becky for making us feel welcome. Uh, their, their kids, they were fantastic. And on this commencement day, I feel like we got an important example of what it's like to go to school here. We found ourselves at Snowflakes last night, and we did not go down the jumps.
that seemed intimidating, but we did go down the, the tubing part, which was exciting. Um, and it's a fun moment when you're going fast and then you see the pad and you start to wonder, is that pad gonna stop me from going through the pad? And then once it does, you say, well, will it stop two of us or three of us? So uh, that was very fun last night. And we topped it off with a cookout burger, which was exciting as well. But um, I wanna say congratulations uh, to all of you and your families on this great day. What a great accomplishment and uh, great place to, to share this experience with each other and uh, excited for your futures and for all that lies ahead of you. All the best to you. Thank you so much for having us here today. Thank you guys. We uh, had a great time last night, dinner with uh, Mel and Vince and Randall and Willie. And, and uh, I have to tell you, talking to Vince afterwards, I already knew Mel was conservative, but Vince could teach government here. I mean, he was, uh, the, you wouldn't believe, it. he's pro Second Amendment, big time. And he's, he doesn't like the Federal Reserve System. I'm, I'm probably saying more than I should, but he's, He's he's uh, he's on the right side of a lot of a lot of political issues, and we appreciate so much and are honored to have Randall, Mel, and Vince come so far to be with us to honor the class of 2016. Thank you. You guys just want to watch Braveheart now? That might be a good. One. <laughs> Dean Parker is a 19, 1997 graduate of Liberty University and a graduate of Harvard Business School. He's an accomplished corporate executive, technology entrepreneur, company advisor, public speaker, and community activist. He's the chairman and CEO of Vita Capital, an early stage investment firm, and was the national, fi national finance chairman for Dr. Ben Carson's 2016 presidential campaign. Prior to Vita, Dean was founder and CEO of Callus Communications, the leader in unified communications in the Southeast. Callus was acquired by C Spire in 2014, and under, under his leadership, Callus was recognized as the fastest growing company in Alabama by Inc. Magazine. Dean and his wife, Joanne, have four children, Jody, Trey, Lauren, and Zach. The Parker family has generously supported Christian ministries and other charities, including the ministry of our close friend and former campus pastor, Clayton King. I'd ask the provost and Dean Parker to join me at the podium. In recognition of Dean Parker's contribution to our nation and to Christian ministries and in acknowledgement of his leadership in the business world, with the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University, the Doctorate of Business is hereby conferred upon Dean Parker with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereunto. Penny Young Nance is a recognized national authority on cultural, children's, and conservative issues. She is the CEO and president of Concerned Women for America, the nation's largest public policy women's organization with more than 50, 500,000 members. It was founded by Beverly LaHaye, a former member of the Liberty University Board of Trustees. Nance, rece Nance received her degree in communications in 1988 from Liberty University and went on to a successful career in marketing, consulting, and public policy. Nance was recently named one of the top four most powerful pro-life female voices by the Christian Post. She has appeared on all major television networks as a commentator on contemporary events and as an expert on domestic issues. Last week, I mentioned on Sean Hannity's radio show that we were honoring Penny today, and Sean stopped me to say that he thought Penny Nance was a rock star in the conservative world. She just released her first book, Feisty and Feminine, a rallying cry for conservative women. 
and continues to teach the next generation to advocate for truth in the public, in the public square. Penny is married to Will Nance. They have two children, Claire, who's a rising sophomore here at Liberty, and Briscoe, who's a high school sophomore back home. In recognition of Penny Nance's contribution to our nation and, and, and in acknowledgement of her leadership in the fight to preserve those values upon which this nation was founded, with the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University, the Doctorate of Humanities is hereby conferred upon Penny Nance with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereunto. It is now my privilege to introduce today's keynote speaker, Rashad Jennings. Rashad is a native of the Lynchburg, Virginia area, growing up just a few miles from Liberty. After high school, he spent one season at the University of Pittsburgh, of Pittsburgh then returned home to help care for his ailing father and then transferred to Liberty. At Liberty, Jennings set numerous records and rushed for 1,000 plus yards in each of his three seasons. During that time, Liberty won its first two Big South Conference championships and had a combined conference record of 11 and 2. He did all this while double majoring in business and sports management with a minor in biblical studies. Rashad also holds the record for the number of touchdowns scored in this stadium as a running back for the Liberty Flames football team. Jennings was drafted by the Jeff Jacksonville Jaguars in 2009. Since then, his career has taken him from coast to coast. After two years in Florida, he played a season with the Oakland Raiders before landing in New York. During his five seasons, during his five seasons in the NFL, J Jennings has scored 20 touchdowns and logged over 3,000 yards on the ground, including 863 yards as a Giants starter last year. I believe we have a video of some of Rashad's football career highlights. Hey, let's have some fun today, baby. There's a fun difference between living and being alive. Today don't live, be alive out there today, baby. Hey, let's play this game like it ain't mandatory. Let's play this game like we love it. Let's get this win. Yes, win on baby. three. One, two, three. Run. The Jacksonville Jaguars select. Throughout his career, Jennings has focused on giving back. His nonprofit organization, the Rashad Jennings Foundation, provides mentoring and promotes literacy, health, and wellness to youth. He visited the Lynchburg area in March to encourage local students to read. In 2015, over 20,000 students from 25 schools across the nation participated in Jennings' Reading Challenge, collectively reading over 160,000 books. Recently, I watched on local television news the moving story about how Rashad fulfilled his lifelong dream of building a new home for his mother. It was only seven years ago that alumnus Rashad Jennings celebrated his own graduation from Liberty University. That makes him our youngest commencement speaker ever. In recognition of Rashad Jennings' contribution to those in need and in acknowledgement of his leadership both on the athletic field and through his philanthropic endeavors, with the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Liberty University, the Doctorate of Humanities is hereby conferred upon Rashad Jennings with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereunto. Thank you. 